7. The Spirit and the Flesh The flesh, the inherent nature derived from the animal origin races, does not naturally bear the fruits of the divine spirit. When the mortal nature has been upstepped by the addition of the nature of the material sons of God, as the Urantia races were in a measure advanced by the bestowal of Adam, then is the way better prepared for the spirit of truth to cooperate with the indwelling adjuster to bring forth the beautiful harvest of the character fruits of the spirit. If you do not reject this spirit, even though eternity may be required to fulfill the commission, he will guide you into all truth. Evolutionary mortals inhabiting normal worlds of spiritual progress do not experience the acute conflicts between the spirit and the flesh which characterize the present-day Urantia races. But even on the most ideal planet, pre-Adamic man must put forth positive efforts to ascend from the purely animalistic plane of existence up through successive levels of increasingly intellectual meanings and higher spiritual values. The mortals of a normal world do not experience constant warfare between their physical and spiritual natures. They are confronted with the necessity of climbing up from the animal levels of existence to the higher planes of spiritual living. But this ascent is more like undergoing an educational training when compared with the intense conflicts of Urantia mortals in this realm of the divergent material and spiritual natures. The Urantia peoples are suffering the consequences of a double deprivation of health in this task of progressive planetary spiritual attainment. The Caligastia upheaval precipitated worldwide confusion and robbed all subsequent generations of the moral assistance which a well-ordered society would have provided. But even more disastrous was the Adamic default in that it deprived the races of that superior type of physical nature which would have been more consonant with spiritual aspirations. Urantia mortals are compelled to undergo such marked struggling between the spirit and the flesh because their remote ancestors were not more fully atomized by the Edenic bestowal. It was the divine plan that the mortal races of Urantia should have had physical natures more naturally spirit-responsive. Notwithstanding this double disaster to man's nature and his environment, present-day mortals would experience less of this apparent warfare between the flesh and the spirit if they would enter the spirit kingdom, wherein the faith sons of God enjoy comparative deliverance from the slave bondage of the flesh in the enlightened and liberating service of wholehearted devotion to doing the will of the Father in heaven. Jesus showed mankind the new way of mortal living, whereby human beings may very largely escape the dire consequences of the Caligastic rebellion and most effectively compensate for the deprivations resulting from the Adamic default. The spirit of the life of Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of animal living and the temptations of evil and sin. This is the victory that overcomes the flesh, even your faith. Those God-knowing men and women who have been born of the Spirit experience no more conflict with their mortal natures than do the inhabitants of the most normal of worlds, planets which have never been tainted with sin nor touched by rebellion. Faith sons work on intellectual levels and live on spiritual planes far above the conflicts produced by unrestrained or unnatural physical desires. The normal urges of animal beings and the natural appetites and impulses of the physical nature are not in conflict with even the highest spiritual attainment, except in the minds of ignorant, mistaught, or unfortunately over-conscientious persons. Having started out on the way of life everlasting, having accepted the assignment and received your orders to advance, do not fear the dangers of human forgetfulness and mortal inconstancy. Do not be troubled with doubts of failure or by perplexing confusion. Do not falter and question your status and standing. For in every dark hour, at every crossroad in the forward struggle, the Spirit of Truth will always speak, saying, This is the way.